those who are not familiar with it, we, uh, the Wall Street Journal reported earlier this afternoon that um, the choice for Secretary of State in the Trump administration is down to Rudolph Giuliani and John Bolton. We don't have John Bolton here tonight, so um, I'm going to ask you some <laughs> questions uh, about... John the... would be a very good choice. <laughs> is there anybody better? Maybe me, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So let me, let, let, me, let me try and channel what some of these <laughs> confirmation hearings will be like. Let's start with Iran. Okay. Uh, again, President Trump said the Iran deal that President Obama struck was a disaster, a disaster to the country. I think he described it as the worst deal possibly he'd ever seen in his life and certainly the worst deal ever constructed on a government, government <laughs> basis. What, do you, what, what should the U.S. Do? president, he's going to be president on January the 20th. This deal is still in place. Um, Iran still continues to do what it's doing. What, how are you going to? Well, the president. What, what would you do about that? Well, first of all, the president has a lot of options because uh, uh, President Obama didn't do what he should have done, really, under the Constitution. He should have submitted that to the United States Senate. That's a treaty. There's no way of escaping the fact that that's a treaty. If you'd like to go to sleep early tonight, get the Federalist Papers and read Federalist Papers 75 written by Hamilton, who's now a Broadway star, as well as Indeed, yeah. a great... Yeah. Uh, and if you want the quintessential definition of a treaty, it's the Iran Agreement. It binds us for more than one president. It binds us for a number of years. It involves a significant area of national security, nuclear power. It should have been submitted to Congress, to the Senate, for a two-thirds vote of the, pre of the senator's president. He never did it. What that means is... That deal is over with, with the present president. Mm. The next president can disavow it mm. as a matter of law like that. And should he? Well, either he should or he should use that power to renegotiate it, letting them know, I don't have to live by any of this. I mean, n none of this is binding on me because he never got the votes. He actually, Obama had even a second way he could have done it. He could have done it as an, as a, as an agreement in which case he would have only had to have gotten a majority vote of the House and Senate. And he knew he couldn't get it. But it was a deal that was negotiated not only with the Iranians, but with the Russians and the Chinese, well, and the British got, and the French he, and the Germans. You fancy, uh, you, he, fancy, you fancy spending the first two years as Secretary so, of State renegotiating the deal? No, I think, I think you have to set uh, pri priorities. So if the priority is let's eliminate ISIS, maybe you uh, put that off a little bit and you get rid of ISIS first, and then you go back to that. Because ISIS short term, I believe, is our greatest danger. And not because of ISIS in, uh, in, in, in Iraq and in Syria, but because ISIS did something Al Qaeda never did. ISIS was able to spread itself around the world. So there are 32 countries that have ISIS cells. The director of the FBI says there are 1,000 investigations in the U.S. So they've uh, created a, a danger that Al Qaeda never presented to us in terms of their ability to strike smaller strikes, but still very devastating, like Orlando and, and uh, Paris and San Bernardino and the priest whose head was chopped off in Nice, mm. which is one that... Uh, mm. I can't even think about.